guys and welcome back to the Motor Recon Podcast. I'm your host Adam. I'm joined again today by Rob, as you'll see on the left hand side of your screen. Uh, what we're going to do today is look at something called base spec luxury and also from around the world with a bit of a twist. So starting with things from like luxury cars but their basic <coughs> spec and compare them. So I'll bring this up on the screen now so you guys can see it for those watching um, and then I'll just quickly share it with Rob so we can see. Um, yeah, the reason that we decided to go through this topic is um, when you look at programs like Top Gear or whatever, you, most of the luxury cars that they might be testing in the car review magazines won't be the base spec model. They'll usually be ones which are much higher up in the pecking order. So we wanted to see, obviously, the money that you pay for a base spec, sort of 7 Series or whatever, what are you actually getting for your money? Yeah, and what does it compare to some of the competitors in their sort of similar trim levels? Um, and during this, we discovered a few things from around the world that we might not normally have uh, seen. So we'll get onto those in a second. So the first one we're going to kick off with um, is, as we mentioned, the BMW 7 Series. Now, very popular car around the world. It does sell uh, quite well in this sort of category. You see a lot of them, particularly around London and sort of your big city areas, a lot of people get chauffeured around with them. Now, for me personally, the new one is not the best looking, given the fact that they've done this huge new uh, grill design, which seems to be going down in a lot of the BMWs lately. Not a massive fan of that, but so let's have a look what, what you get. Yeah, what I would say though is compared to some of the more recent BMW offerings, I'd say it's not as bad. No, because the car's pretty big itself, so it kind of kind of works, works, I guess. It with it a little bit, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, like it does on the X7 a little bit, but on the new concepts that are coming out, it's just not nice. So, let's kick us off. So the base Model 7 series that's available in the UK, this is only the UK in this instance, we will come on to some of the more global ones later on, is the 730D. Now, obviously, given that is a uh, diesel engine uh, with, as it says here, 265 brake horsepower, 41.5 to 44.8 mpg, uh, as with most BMWs, it is rear-wheel drive, which is nice, and does not to 62 in 6.1 seconds. So it's actually not that slow um, for such a big car. I was about to say that, such yeah, a big not car. only am I impressed with the WLTP cycle, which is obviously the more stringent cycle for economy, so that's a closer to real-world estimate. I was also impressed with the not to 62 sprint for a car that size. Yeah, me too, to be honest, and it is pretty impressive because this is the base one as well so obviously you can get a lot you can get them up to v12s i think in this but obviously we're not going to and i would also say that compared to um some of the other offerings we're going to look at this does have rear wheel drive out of the box it does and that's something that bmw usually go for they started to change a bit more recently with their smaller cars and i'm suspecting it'll work its way up to these bigger models later on and um, but on this basic one so let's have a look what you get so you get Metallic or non-metallic paints, but sometimes you do have to pay more for these. So we're just going to keep it with the standard blue that it's got selected as is. Suits me. Yeah, the basic alloy wheels, which again, you can add them more, but the 18-inch ones come as standard. Not a massive fan, they do it like pram wheels. I think they could do with it being a little bit bigger, perhaps up to the 19s or maybe even the 20s. <coughs> for me, I think it's one of those things because although they might look like pram wheels, they might actually help with overall ride comfort well that, that's the thing this is a luxury car now i know they do have the clever suspension on the 7 series so it should mitigate that however every little helps even even when it comes to this so it's true i'm not buying my 7 for performance really no most of the time you'll be driving it around or being driven in it in some cases but i think you get the long wheelbase for that one so the interior option, again, I'll leave it as completely standard. You do get leather as standard, but as you'd expect on a car of this sort of level, um, you do get a level. You get the nice digital dashboard, as you can see there in the middle, which I think does come on standard with most. And you do get the standard BMW iDrive system. Uh, I'm not going to... Which I would say, I, I find the BMW iDrive a particular standout point. I really do like the whole system. The way that they haven't completely got rid of the turn bezel as well. I like the whole yeah, having the I, bezel in the middle to use. I do prefer that setup to most, which it does work well. It's better, a damn sight better than Audi's new system anyway. Not on looks from like looking at it, but to actually use it, especially particularly Well, that's driving. the thing, isn't it? I yeah. find with sort of the haptic feedback screens in the middle of the sort of cars from pretty much most manufacturers that offer it, I'm more distracted using them than I would be with a bezel-based system yeah. where I can just feel my way through the settings and yeah. still keep myself fully focused on the road. And I'd agree with you on that one. 
And um, so what else do you get as standard then? So look at this, we've got fine fine line wood, which I'm guessing it is real wood, given it is on the 7 series, we'd hope so. You do get obviously a few more options, but we're going to stick with this standard one here. It does look quite nice, I do like a darker wood on the interior, I think a light wood's a bit bright, and I think the piano blacks uh, on interiors are horrible for just getting fingerprints and everything all on them, so that works well for me. Like I said... Yeah, if I was going to swap out the wood, I would also swap out the leather for cream. Me personally, I also would, but I don't know if that is an option on the base one, you probably have to pay extra for that. So, we're not having any of the optional equipment, so what are we getting here? So that is actually the summary on there. Does it give us a price for the car? If you scroll up to the top, I think it gave us a price at the top of the um, of, of the list all the way up, potentially. Um, I no. I think it, no, I think it did. We have to yeah, we, we can just quickly scroll back to see that, can't we? So yeah, so ba basic one starts at £71,285. So in actuality, in this sort of level, it's cheaper than what I would suspect it would be um, in this sort of class. But And you do actually do, you do get quite a lot on there. There's nothing really that you would do without. Um, no. That you'd, that you'd need no, anyway. The, the question is, when you're spending £71,000 on a car on base spec, you wouldn't want to be doing without... No. Even on a base spec, it, it, there, there has to be a point where, you know, you are spending so much even on the base spec that it needs equipment. Maybe to a large extent, it's more about um, sort of the higher quality materials for the interior. Yeah, like I, I, think, I think they'll do that because it's in the special trim. Yeah, and like you can pick more expensive wood or you could have like carbon fiber that, perhaps yeah. and things like that. So, yeah, that, that to me kind of works well. What the hell is that? Um, so yeah, no, that, that does actually work well. You get a lot of things for your money there. So seventy-two thousand, well, seventy-one thousand two hundred eighty-five pounds for the seven series in its basic form. Not as bad as I was expecting. But let's move on to its arch nemesis and probably the most popular big saloon in the world, the Mercedes S Class. Now, if you go to London, as you well know, when we go, every single car pretty much you see parked outside hotels or the ballet areas or the luxury taxis they're all s classes within reason e or s class mercedes now there's got to be a reason for that and they are all in fairly basic trims they're not amg ones or anything like that so what do we get so this one actually starts a little bit more as you can see in the top right seventy four thousand five hundred forty pounds mm. but do you do you get more I'd say that it looks, it's tough to call really because I actually don't mind the new 7 Series. It, it's looks, it, in its more simple form, I actually don't mind it. I like the S Class, but I've never seen it as a pretty car. I, well, Whereas the old 7 Series I thought was pretty, the one from the 90s. Yeah, well, me personally, I do prefer the S Class on looks alone. Um, mm. in, interior Mercedes, no matter which one you're in. Um, I've noticed particularly like in the centre dashboard bit and down the side in the door pockets they do use some cheap materials no matter which one you are on even in the Maybach one um, so that could come against it in this one and the charging more so so what do you actually get for your money so this is the basic one as we said we're not going to go for any of these additional packages the grand edition is the standard one that it lets us select in the UK again this could differ abroad so we're not going to have anything uh, anything extra on there so, so if we're going to have a quick nosy down though if we have a look at the grand edition down at the bottom it gives us a quick summary of some of the things that it does come with and it looks like it comes with most of the things that you would want like say much like the bmw x but you're not going to go wanting are you yeah no so as i say come ventilated front and front of seats that's cold and hot um panoramic sunroof it didn't mention that on the beamer um you get the front seat comfort package as standard. The Burmeister surround sound system, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, heat insulating dark tinted glass, that'll be quite good in the summer. Uh, power closing, whatever the heck that is. I'm guessing it's the... Uh, I think they'll have the soft closed soft doors, closed doors things yeah. like that. Uh, surround lighting with a projection on the brand logo, that's irrelevant, but it's got it. Uh, open pour black ash wood trim so you do get black ash wood again so again like the 7 series you do get your wood in there so you are getting the premium materials even though you are on the basic one um, which is obviously pretty good 
uh, air balance package. Now I'm guessing that is just for something inside and outside the car. It'll balance the air or some sort of climate system, perhaps. Uh, energizing comfort control. Not sure what that is, but they do use good names for these sort of things, don't they? Oh, and you get the remote remote parking as well uh, in the Grand Edition. Yeah, so I pa it'll park that, itself. Yeah. I'm sure the Seven Series will do that, but it didn't mention it on the uh, uh, on the thing there. Uh, Premium Plus package, Grand Edition. That's it. Uh, Twenty inch AMG ten spoke light alloy wheels. Now, so it's two inches more than what you got as standard on the BMW. That came on eighteens as standard. Yeah, the one thing that's worrying about this though. Bear in mind, so on the actual website, this was the most basic one it let us pick, but it does seem to be that that is actually a package you can select. Yeah, I would say so. But it was the most basic one to let us pick anyway, and it's similar sort of price to the 7 Series, so I'll give it that one, uh, that that is probably accurate. Um, but as you say, it, it is also worth mentioning that the on-the-road price for the S5, the the S350D does come in at about three and a half grand more than the on-the-road price beginnings for the BM. It does. It is also, again, the, the 7 Series was a 30D. This is a 350, so it might, when we get to the actual bit further on... Um, might look at some of the power, you might see it quite a bit more. So we'll skip through all these because we can only have the basic ones. I do have to say though, I do much prefer them wheels. I know they're the AMG line wheels, but they do look a lot nicer. Yeah, and as you say, they are coming as standard as well. That actually, as far as the aesthetics on the outside, they do make a big difference. Yeah, because if you if you spent an extra grand on a nice set of wheels for the 7 Series, you, your price is coming up pretty close to this anyway. So, ooh. and it does beg the question as well with the seven series. When you're spending seventy odd grand on your car, you would probably be expecting a standard something more than eighteen inch rims, probably. Yeah, well, you see, that eighteen inch is quite big. It's just because that car. Is... I know, but on a car that large, yeah, it does look want. small. Because you say, I think mine, mine runs on seventeen and yeah, it's obviously only a small car. And um, so, one thing I will say on this: the actual interior on the S Class from a purely aesthetics thing i do think it looks a lot nicer and they also have the similar thing to bmw where they've got the scroll wheel in the middle you can see that there and the touchpad on top so you can actually do both uh, and navigate your way around the enormous central screen which is a lot better well, integrated into the dash only two side by side those yeah so the, the left hand one is obviously your uh, dials and uh, you can put your sat nav screen in the middle of it and things like that and have your infrared camera and all that sort of gizmos on there um, but it, I think it's much nicer integrated into the dashboard than the 7 series I'll give it, give them credit where that's due um, yeah I think it's more of a timeless design it's sort of like you've got the stainless steel or aluminium sort of bezel um, air vents in the center and things like that i think it could probably age a little bit better maybe it, or, or time time. it will the one thing i'll criticize them for which i've never liked because we've been in both these cars and sat in them and had a bit of a play around we've never unfortunately driven one but um the electric uh, driving seat adjustment thing on the doors i don't like the fact that they are on the door rather than sort of down the side of the seat or to the like just a bit lower down it doesn't seem intuitive where they are it also ruins the clean lines it does and it's the same on all models it seems to be it's not just the s class but that just seems to be mercedes theme now the seats in this do look really really comfy and they are having sat in them very very comfy and that's something they are renowned for but other than that they've got a little button over here for adjusting opening your uh glove compartment but very very classy me personally again i would have a light a lighter color leather than the black but i understand on the big yeah i think it is quite it could potentially be quite dark well they've, yeah they've got the big panoramic roof but i think it, a bit of a just a slightly lighter cream or even like a light gray leather would just make it that little bit better but again if you look at it the napa leather the black is the one without charge um Oh yeah. I think if you start, oh, protect, oh no, it looks like you can get some of the nut leather and the silk beige leather without extra charge. So you can lighten it up. Can we? Can we? Can we? Oh, what does it get rid of? Oh no, it's that part of the exclusive package. Oh right, okay. Even though it says no extra charge, so the rear seats again didn't, but weren't able to see that on the seven series, but they are pretty much the same. Um, you can automatically adjust all your headrests and do all that with electric and and whatnot. So that does actually look pretty nice. A bit of a better angle of the interior there. Looking very, very, mm. very good. I, I can't fault them on the design-wise. It does look classy. 
And I also love the fact that much like how Bentley still do, they've still got the mechanical clock that sits in the dashboard as well. Yeah, it's just I, a, do, I don't know why I still like that. Yeah, do. you don't have to use it. There obviously is a digital option, oh. but it's a nice feature just to have on there. It's just nice to have. Yeah, it is a nice to have. I quite like. I prefer the steering wheel on the Merc than I do on the uh, Beamer as well, if I say so myself. So, what else have we got on here then? So, we're not having any of that. That all looks exactly right. So, let's have a look at our vehicle. So what do we get then? So this is a bit more into the engine and things, which we did on the 7 Series at the start. So let's have a look. So in this one, you get a six-pot diesel. Uh, it, mm -hmm. is, it is actually three-litre, despite being called the 350, which is a bit misleading, and they do that a lot. So little up on power. Yeah, 286. It's a little up on power yeah, compared, to the, um, to up on power compared to the BM. Not much, but just a tiny bit. Nine speed, uh, nine uh, gears in your gearbox. They're the 9G Tronic thing, which is good. Six seconds to 60, so it's actually slightly quicker. 0.1 of a second yeah. quicker. Obviously, they both do 155. That's just the German uh, limited uh, run for them there. Fuel consumption. Now, this is some bits are better, some bits are worse. It has a combined um, of 47.1. I strongly suspect you won't come anywhere close to that. Um, but well, it looks like actually the combined one is 41 mpg, and that puts it relatively oh, yeah, close yeah. to the uh, BM. So they're, they're in the same ballpark. Yeah, but they are exact rivals. These two just literally compete against each other, really. I know there's the other one we're coming on to next, but it's not very so popular. I think it's quite clear for you then, Adam, going from what you've said, if it was your money and you were picking between the two of them, you'd be going for the S-Class. Yes. Now, it's not necessarily just because of the equipment it has. I personally think the S-Class looks better. That's just my opinion. Obviously, I know things mm. vary. Uh, and I do prefer the looks of the interior, albeit it might not be as functional, but I do prefer the look of it, and I think that's very important, given you're in there a lot. So if it was your money... Yeah, I'd say if it was my money, and if it was push come to shove, I'd probably end up falling on the S-Class as well, mainly because, as much as I do like the 7 Series, and I like the iDrive system, and I do, it's a nice system, I can't get away from the fact that I just don't like the look of the front end. And if I'm spending 70 odd gram on a car, I want to at least like it to stay to this. Yeah, no, and I'd agree with you on that front. I, I, that another reason why I would go for this because I just think it looks better on the outside. Um, so we'll quickly move on to the next one. So this is the third of the German rivals, but again, the, probably the least popular of them all by a long way. Um, so this one is the Audi A8. Now, cheapest of the three, I'll give them that, 70,125, but then again, I don't think they can command the same price, just because it's But not... I do love it. Yeah, in pure aesthetics alone, I prefer the S-Class again still slightly, but this is definitely up on the BMW. I would say that this has the winner of if you're gonna, it's more stealth. Yeah, this, this, could, you could just be wallowing around in this, no one would bat an eyelid or even look at you, I think, in this. So the one for the A8 that we actually could pick, uh, as you can see there, is the Sport variant, which is Audi's limited one, which is the 50 TDI Quattro Tiptronic. So this is the only one so far with four-wheel drive that I've seen. The Merc was actually rear-wheel drive. drive as well. So we've gone for the cheapest option here, as you can see, 70,000 with the 50. So that's 286 PS. That's around, what is that, 250-ish horsepower? Yeah. There or thereabouts. It's, uh, it's slightly down on power, but you are spending less. Uh, and it gets again, it's a three litre um, from there. I'm assuming it's six pot, but it could also be four. I'm guessing six. It doesn't actually say. So, yeah, we've I got. I think it genuinely makes a difference having four wheel drive, though. It makes it more usable. Yeah, on a daily basis. Potentially, you know. And my, yeah. my Audi had Quattro, and it was quite good in the snow. So, we've well, got... what I would say as well is, um, well, I'm assuming these cars will spend an awful lot of time in the outside lane of an autobahn being blasted at 150, 155 mile an hour, yeah. wherever they're going. I think four wheel drive in those circumstances will certainly be a comforting thing to have. Yeah, you'd imagine so, wouldn't you? Right, so let's have a look. So, exterior. Again, we've discussed this. Oh, great. You're not very proud of that, are they? Right. So exterior-wise, this suffers from the same problem as the 7 Series did, in my opinion. The wheels are far too small. Wheels are too small. Mouth is too big. Yeah, I'd agree on that. It looks a bit, as particularly more at the rear there. It just doesn't seem to fit. 
it's a very saggy looking design. I think this, this I, I would say as well, I think this actually suffers from the wheel problem more than the Merc. It looks like they're just not filling the archers. Yeah, but I, I know why they do this. They want you to spend more, hence they do it on purpose. Because you think you look at that and think, I can't drive that. I'd have to you'd have to spend more just to make it look reasonable. Um it's a shame really, but I get understand from a business perspective why they do. But then again, they don't sell many. Um, so what do we get as the standard? So all these colours here are actually free, so you could have any of these. I personally, would, good. I personally would probably go for something like um, the dark blue or the dark red. So something like that. I'd go for the dark blue, personally. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's actually quite nice, that, isn't it? Yeah, so that doesn't actually affect... So they, unlike the others, they do give you a bit more of a selection on colour. Oh. which isn't bad so what do we get I'm not going to fit any exclusive so the alloy wheels here we go 18 inch again just like the BMW probably could do even the, the 19 inches aren't very nice either I don't like any of them if I'm honest and unlike the BM it doesn't look like you get a choice of 20s no I don't get why she's interesting be, in yeah, itself there must, yeah there must be a reason but I don't like any of the options on there unfortunately uh, headlights again we'll leave that as standard so let's have a look at the interior this is where the real standout thing is because this is where you're going to spend most of your time aren't you so you do get the comfort, I think, comfort I think standard I think immediately it becomes abundantly more obvious it's, it seems more cluttered than the Merc in the centre console yeah it's just and the BMW as well both because you've got yeah. your two screens which yeah is all well and good and you've got the little buttons but and I'm assuming most of this will be able to be done by voice commands, but if you're driving along on the motorway and you want you you have to look down to push your buttons, and I know it's haptic feedback, but they're not very even when you're not driving, they're not very intuitive to flick between screens and and use. I think it was a poor choice on their front. I think they should have done it left the top one as it was and had some normal seating controls at the bottom, in my opinion. Or at least given you the choice to have some sort of bezel potentially in the centre, like both Merc and BM of Cat. Yeah, it's just, it looks nice as a design, like I say, it's very clean, but it's, I don't know, it just, I don't can't see it working properly in the real world. Not to you use. see, you say it does look clean, and it's in some respects it does, but when I'm looking at the image of the full centre console there, I actually think that to the eye, with all the screens on it, actually looks quite busy and fussy. I think it's only because of the actual options they've got selected there. If you were on a particular screen, like say you had on your sat-nav in the middle and then just your heating controls down below, it might change. It's just because it's on the menu with loads of different options, I think. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, but it's not so big. It's not horrible. It's not a. Pl it's, I quite like the design of it in that sense. But like I say, I don't think it could work in the real world. And I think by far the worst of the three in terms of usability and actual luxury looking. Because you can get that interior pretty much on any Audi. I know you can on the 7 Series and such, but it just doesn't look luxury, if that's what makes sense. Yeah, I suppose it's a tough one, really. I mean, as far as Audi's offerings are concerned, if it was my money, I'd probably end up in a... Um... It's all like an A6. Yeah, which you can get with that. So I think yeah. I think the actual other option, it, once you spec it up into the more of the high-end options, it might start to set, set itself apart. But you do get the comfort seats as standard. Uh, now then, are they, oh, so we do get a choice of leather colours as, as standard. So you get your black, your red or brownish clarity colour, tan colour, which should suit you nicely, cream, a darker cream, and another black colour. So... I guess a good selection of options as standard. I think they've done done all right there. Rear end, it's only got two seats in the back, which... Yeah, which is different. I think the S-Class had um, three, didn't it? Yeah. Well, it says the standard option is a three-seat rear bench with centre armrest, so you must be able to use it as okay, a seat. Okay, it must be a seat, yeah. Although it doesn't look very comfortable or appealing in, to actually use. So what do we get? So Although that being said, how many people who are sat in the back of the eight series will have a third person in there with them? No, I I, I understand it from that point of view. Because you very rarely are gonna, are you? So what do we get? So we get four way electric lumbar support, standard comfort center armrest as standard, twenty two inch electrically adjustable seats with uh, twenty two way, sorry, electrically adjustable seats, which is a lot. Uh heated front seats, isofix, that's fine. Um, so what do we get? So on your equipment wise, let's have a look what you come as standard with here. Nothing. 
Do you have a show for fact? Oh, no, to be fair, no. I'm assuming, yeah, it looks like it's on par with... Yeah, so you get your high beam assist, other stuff. body coloured exterior mirror housing, chrome exterior pack. You don't get panoramic glass sunroof, which you do on the S-Class, but then again, this is four grand cheaper, so you could add that on and still be cheaper than both of them, really. You do get, what do you guys do you get? You get your side and rear windows with heat insulating glass. That's uh, something I think the S-Class did have, but not the 7 Series. Uh, you get cloth headlining rather than leather, but are you really bothered about that? Operating buttons in black, that's a standard feature. Lower inlays in dark matte brushed aluminium, upper inlays. So you do get, you're not going to be without, are you really? No, I yeah. think in all of the options we've gone through, I think it's clear that you're not going to be on cheapskate row. You're starting at a, such a high price that that's never really going to be an option, I don't think. No. So you do get quite a lot, but and again, it's 70 grand, it is the cheapest of the three. Uh, unfortunately, probably not my option. As for this, no, I, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I still like it, and I certainly wouldn't say no if someone was giving it to me, or you know, if I was offered a chance to drive it, I'd bite your hand off. Yeah, but if it was my money and it was my choice between those three, I would probably end up falling on getting the S class. Yeah, same for me. So, let's look at something slightly different now. So, this is going to go on to something um, from the Japanese market. So, this is this is available in the UK, uh, in the UK, as you can see, uh, some of the options we have gone through aren't, but this is the Lexus LS. Now the base model, again, that it let us pick was the LS500H, which as you can guess, is a hybrid option. The only one of the three that has that so far. But what I think what shocked us both was the starting price on this. Yes, this is the most expensive of the four so far, which is £76,900. And I have to say, it is the ugliest of the three. I don't mind it that much. I'm not saying I hate it. It's just no. comparing it's it. It's just, no, compared to the other ones that we've currently gone through, this certainly sits on a level below us. That being said, Lexus isn't seen as much of a luxury brand in the UK as it might be in other markets. No, so. even though they are, they're extremely well made. The, it's, oh, they're it excellent feels cars. Solid. It's just for whatever reason, their marketing and branding isn't as pervasive over here is it i think it's just more the badge than anything when you think of mercedes bmw and audi even though they do come the bottom of most reliability studies you spend a lot of money on the car and yeah they can they have a lot of flaws it just has that old style badge sort of prestige that this just doesn't have i think but it does have wheels that fit the archers and by far the best alloys are standard of on all of them i think a bit shiny but they do look the best of the three. And like I say, I think we both noticed as well, I do believe this is the only hybrid base model that we have in the selections today, which makes it the ideal choice for someone who is looking for a big executive saloon. Yeah, we say he's looking at the base prices potentially and maybe is environmentally conscious. That being said, with a starting price of nearly £77,000, you may well be able to get a hybrid option from Merck or BMW yeah, the, at that price. The S-Class and the 7 Series both have hybrid options. I'm not sure if the Audi does, but the, the other two definitely do. Um, yeah. But again, in the black colour it comes with, you do have a few choice of colours here. So you get your whites, reds, clarets, dark blues. I actually prefer the black on it. It hides the lines a bit, which in this car, yeah, I, I, quite think, like the black. I think on that kind of car, it does suit it well. We're not having any of the options, but there's a lot of them and they are expensive. Why would you have a foldable storage box for 50 quid? Surely you could just buy a tub from the pound shop. Anyway. Or just go to Aldi and get a bag. <laughs> yeah, either way. So, right, hang on. So let's go back here. So we've got none of them there. How do we get onto the interior? Ah, wheel options. So, standard wheels. There is no options other than the standard wheels, which... Again, the 20s are the biggest yeah, the, option out of all of them that we've seen today so well, far. The, the S class was 20 as well, but I think. Oh, the, was, oh sorry, it yeah, was, yeah. I think the sorry. design on these actually do look the best, wheel wise anyway, um, albeit a little bit shiny. So let's have a look at the interior. Now, this is where the, this is where I think, to my opinion, it will fall to pieces. And yes, it <laughs> does. I don't like yeah. that. It's it's bizarre. it's close but no cigar, isn't it? The heads up display is just that little bit less appealing to look at. Yeah, the the these and all of it. Yeah, nearly but not quite. 
The centre dash behind the steering wheel is not good for me at all. The big screen in the middle, while not bad, uh, it has the touch uh, touch bar at the bottom. Can you see it there in the, in the thing? It's like you touch it with your finger, and then it's got the little automatic gear knob there. I don't like the stripes across the dashboard of the doors and the and the centre by the gear stick. And it also has a CD player there, which, let's face it, that should be... Is that a CD player? That is a CD player, yes. Oh, God. I think it's a lot of the Japanese cars still do put them in for some reason. That, to me, is definitely not a seven, nearly enough 77 grand interior. And um, would you say as well, I think we can both concur that that is definitely the worst interior that we've come across so far. Absolutely, and by quite a margin. Yeah, and it's ironically the most expensive car in the base spec that we currently look through. Yeah. Now, the seats don't look so bad. They do actually look comfortable, and I'm, I am sure they are. Uh, would have been asked if we could actually get a, a look around one of these. We've never been to many Lexus garages, have we? Actually, that's something that we could do when we're all let out of lockdown. That's a good podcast episode, that if we go to a Lexus garage and have a proper look around. Yeah, because there's one in Bradford, but we've never been in. Yeah, we just never been. So what do we get? So it's a three and a half litre. Biggest engine of the bunch. Multi-stage hybrid system as well, which, again, we've already gone through. So, can we go to the summary page? So, summary. Let's see what we get on here then. Because one of the things I am curious to see is what its potential MPG uh, combined output is compared to the other offerings. Largely because if you are buying this, you might be environmentally conscious. So, so what have we got here then? Let's have a look. So it's your three and a half liters. That actually is the biggest engine, despite being the hybrid. Mm. It also has two hundred and twenty horsepower, which is down on all of them, despite having the despite, largest displacement. But yeah, despite having the largest displacement, and uh, torque three hundred and fifty. That's not that bad. Um, so the electric generator, so what does this give you? Lithium ion, so it's the pretty standard one, max six hundred and fifty volts. So yeah. very it's a very small battery. With that being said, it doesn't I'll say, I'm assuming it doesn't really need a massive. Oh no, he, no here we go, look, so here we go. It does actually give you an additional hundred and thirty two brake horsepower on top of that. So on power wise it, if you combine everything it actually is up by the look of it and does give you 300 newton meters more of torque as well. Yeah. So that's actually... But well, let's see what the potentially, hopefully it'll give us some performance figures. There we go. 5.4, quickest. Easily the quickest. 155 top end, but again, I'm assuming that's just electronically limited. I, I would imagine... Well, it's starting more. to make a case for itself. Yeah. Um, what have we got here? Proper five seats as well, as it said. Fuel capacity, 82 litres. That's not very... Like, mm, it's big enough. Mm. Towing is prohibited on this car. Not that, you would, not that you would do, but it is. Can you spot anywhere any MPG numbers? There? Do you keep scrolling down to the bottom? It's got ah, fuel consumption. consumption there. Okay, that is by far the worst. That is ter that, that's the worst, isn't it? Despite the, uh, I'm yeah. assuming it's that extra displacement that's doing it no favors. Yeah, I'd guess so. And it also might weigh a bit more given the fact that it's got chucking big batteries around. Mm. But yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? So despite, um, from a face value, for example, I took this as potentially the more environmentally conscious option for you to choose, given its hybrid technology. It's a lot faster than the German offerings. Yeah, obviously on the base spec battle, but um, yeah, that sort of combined that, yeah. fuel consumption is not great. Not very good at all. So that is actually a bit of a surprise. But nevertheless, on to the next. I definitely wouldn't have that car. Wouldn't even cross my mind if I was in that market for a car. And the interior is no, confirmed. No, me neither, unfortunately. So this one is a little bit less now. So this is something we don't get in the UK. And this is something Hyundai actually has announced that you might have seen, which is the Genesis brand. This is their luxury brand. This is um, like Infinity is to Nissan or... Um, Who's another one? Lincoln is, to, oh, Lexus is, sorry, to Toyota, I guess. That would, would go with that one. So, an actual side profile, pretty boxy, but, yeah. I don't like the wheels. Passable. Either. Passable. I don't like the wheels so much, but let's go on to the next bit. So, this is, oh, God, go away. Um, yes, I'm saying I'm from 90210 in Hollywood, but we'll gloss over that. What I will 
say as well, um, while this is loading, is uh, we were looking at some of the other uh, models that Genesis mm -hmm. offer, and we think that will potentially be another episode in the future because there are some... Ironically, this top spec is one of the models that we think is less sort of pretty than some of its uh, cheaper. I think their website has actually just stopped working, if I'm honest. Not, I can't click on it. I could save an exit, but then I can't do anything other than that. Okay, well, why don't we move on to the Cadillac then, for now? Yeah, right, okay. Ignore that one. That was actually quite a cheap car, and it was something I didn't want to look at, given we can't get it here. But we'll go straight on to this, which is another one we cannot get in the UK, which is, well, most Cadillacs, but this is the Cadillac CT6. This to, was our option because it was the biggest one that they did. Um, Looks-wise, I actually quite like it. I'm not going to not gonna lie there. I do, yeah. It is very, very, it yeah, a very muscular looking car, very big. Nice rear end quad tailpipes as well, which is a nice feature. Mm -hmm. And as you say, at $57,000, now I don't know what the starting prices of Let, uh, BMWs and the Audis are out. in the US. But, um, so that's about 45k. So it's yeah, and as, and as you say, I don't know what the starting price of, say, the S class is in the United States, but I'm assuming it's more than 45 It'll be, about, it'll, it'll be about 100 grand, I'd imagine, if you look at the actual difference. So, it's significantly this is less. 30, in the, if you put it in pounds, 30 grand cheaper. That's an entire, yeah. that's a Focus RS kind of cheaper. So what do you actually get, though, for your money? So you buy, get, again, this is actually by far the biggest engine, 3.6 litre V6. Now, the American ones are well known for not going for economy, so I don't think it'd be fair to compare them on that one. But let's just have a quick look at the interior as well before we move on. <laughs> yeah, now you see, this is where things are starting to show. It's obviously starting to show the price differential here. Yes. Um, it isn't a sort of like a digital sort of hood, is it? It's all, it's all dials and things like that. It looks comfortable in the back, though. It does, like it does look comfortable. The screen's actually quite well integrated. I'll give them credit for that. I do prefer screens when they are in the top centre. Um, I would have liked to have seen a digital dash, but then again, you are on spending 40 grand, but you do get them on cheaper cars. Um, yeah. Yeah, the seats look relatively okay. They look comfy enough, but nowhere near as thick, bulky and chunky as sort of the, uh, excuse me, as the German uh, rivals you get there. But nevertheless, I think it would be quite nice to sit in. They are known for wallowing along Cadillacs. Comfortable in the back, for sure. I'd say so. Yeah. They look actually quite nice. They like kind of sitting in a little bucket seat. I said they, they look quite nice, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, and you can put your armrest down as well if you want. The others do have that. But so let's have a look. What do we get then? So we get. Your well, I just notice it has a ten-speed gearbox. It does. That will that should be good for uh, fuel consumption. Should be, but I'm sure we'll find out if it's not. So what color options do we get? Okay, you get black or what? Well, black or silver as standard. That's a lot less than the other options as standard. A hell of a lot less, but I think the car does suit black, so I'll let them off with that one. But they should have more. What else can we have? Some packages here. So let's see what we get as standard. I'm guessing none of them. No, none of them. But again, whilst we're looking through this, we always need to keep in mind that this car is substantially cheaper than the, than the German rivals. It is. I'm just trying to skip through to the end, so I don't want any accessories. I want the summary. So here we go. So let's have a look at the summary. So nothing selected. Net price, 57000 So do the American ones give us an actual overview? I don't think they do, you know. That's a shame. Well, what we could do is... Um put some of the sort of performance specs if we find them up on the screen or something like that I guess but yeah I'll try and look at I'll try and look at them after and see if we can put them on but unfortunately yeah. they don't seem to give us that option so straight on to the last one this is this is one I've actually been intrigued about because I've been interested in this brand for a while particularly the Navigator model um, but this is the Lincoln Continental brand new for 2020 so it is a, it is a new car um, looks wise it's not the best uh, I'll say that again. We're going one engine bigger again, though, this time. 3.7 litres. But you say it looks wise, it doesn't look that good, but I think it looks pretty premium, especially for that starting price of 45 
for about forty six thousand yeah. dollars. So this is four hundred and twenty eight dollars a month. Let's second. Let's have a uh, convert this. So forty five eight nine five thirty six grand. So you're knocking another ten grand off the uh, off the Cadillac as well. So yeah, you've got to be considering this is unbelievably cheap compared to say a BMW seven series or whatever. So. As you say, you've got your 3.7 litre V6, which is similar. It's a similar sort of way it delivers yeah. its powers compared to the S Class and the uh, 7 Series. But I think it's unfair to fully level it at them. No, no, and I'd say that. So, what do we get on the, Does it give us any information on the actual thing? So, just 3.7 litre engine included on the Incanda, that's fine. So, you do have an option of front or all wheel drive, but obviously on the base one, we're going for the front wheel drive option. Uh, one thing I will say on this as well. Um, just for the looks of it, this is actually Lincoln is Ford's premium brand. Uh, if you're with me, but if they're starting premium brands at 30 odd grand, what are we getting? And also, as well, interestingly, vehicles are built to order, which you don't often get on a car this cheap because normally, nice. normally they build quite a lot and just stock dealers up with them, don't they? On most of these cars, but that's actually so. Let's, let's have a look at the interior as well, just to see what it's got. Okay, so the seats. Now, this is something that I have never, obviously, never personally sat in one. I would actually quite like to, but I've seen so many reviews of the Navigator, which has similar sort of design seats with these little pads that come off, and all they, all they do is get rave reviews for how comfortable they actually are. Design wise, they look a bit strange, but I do think they are comfortable. Right, if it works, it works. As you say, I think you know what. It's got a digital dashboard, yeah. and I think the center display doesn't actually look that bad. No, this is better than the Cadillac for ten grand cheaper in terms of interior. I would give it. Yeah, I will say as well. This may be a little bit controversial. I don't know what the plastics are and what the interior quality is like because I've never actually sat in it. But from aesthetics alone, I prefer it to the Lexus, which is like yeah, oh yeah, forty I, grand more. Hands down. The one thing I would change is the color of that wood. The wood, I think, is yeah. vile. If that was just a darker colour, um, perhaps maybe like brushed aluminium or something along those lines, or maybe even like a, just a darker wood, like a proper dark oak or something like that, rather than that. Uh, Take it out of the Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, just change the wood. But other than that, I don't think it's too bad. Decent sized no. screen with everything, and proper buttons on it, so you can, if you are driving, you can sort of feel your way if you know where the button is. Not so keen on this little bit down here, if I'm honest, but then again, it is nice to have a proper control that you could actually use while driving. But digital display, again, which is a kudos there. It's something the Cadillac didn't give you. What's that there? Can we have another angle? No, it's just back to that. But that's actually quite interesting. So what do we get in there? So we can go to model options, exterior. So what do we get? We get a couple of colours uh, as standard. We get magenta grey, blue diamond, infinite black, and silver. So you get, again, Which, more, more options in the Cadillac. Indeed, yeah. In fact, let me just have a look at this magnetic grey. Okay, that looks quite bit, like it. I actually quite like that. Because, again, this is a car you don't want to show it off. You don't want to be brash, do you? So I think that actually suits it oh. quite well. Let's have a look at the interior options. What have we got here then? So. You can, oh, that's much nicer with the cream and the dark. Much mm. nicer. That is $800, though. Given the fact you're spending so little on the car, this is your budget luxury car. Mm, not... I would certainly spring for that. For the sake of the money, and most people do lease them, I think I would do the same as well. So you have an optional car cover. You've got side window deflectors by uh, Lund. Nothing of them. So let's have a look at the finish. So what do we get then? We've picked nothing. So base spec is forty five thousand eight hundred ninety five. We've picked zero options. Now I, I fully expect that, as far as its dynamic performance is concerned, there'll certainly be nothing to write home about. But if you're buying this car, that's not what you're into anyway. You want something that'll cruise along very comfortably down the freeway. Yeah. And again, you, but, well, and I genuinely do think it will deliver on what you're asking for. I'd say. Yeah, I would agree. And also, well, it doesn't give us any of the information on the uh, power and things. I don't think the American ones like to do that. But it is the biggest in terms of capacity. Uh, and it, we found it is a V6, as it mentioned. But you do only get a six-speed automatic. The Cadillac was 10. And I bet a lot of engineering did go into a 10-speed gearbox. 
Um, oh, indeed, yeah. So you've got a six speed there, but that's probably all you need. Uh, I will try and find some of the actual numbers um, for this and see if we can get them up on screen when it's going through. But for the sake for the sake of the price, I would have that over the Cadillac, no questions asked. Me too. I actually think that in a lot of ways it looks more premium than the price tag. Yeah, and in, 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 this is purely on aesthetics from the exterior. I think it looks more premium than the base spec seven series and the and the Audi, not necessarily the Mercedes, um, but just purely on the looks. It just got. It's, I, yeah, I would say that uh, I, I, it's one of those cars that's actually grown on me. I would say I yeah. do quite like it. So a, I mean, look at it. You can spend up to seventy grand on these for the black label ones, but it'd be interested to see. Um, we might do that in another one. What you actually get for your money? Could do the higher end uh, levels. Yeah. Well, that's actually quite nice. So it'd be probably a nice place to wrap us up there. I think that's actually quite an interesting topic that we that we delved into there. Uh, and so let us have to let us know what you think in the description below or any of the comments and we'll we'll uh, be sure to read those uh, but as always if there's anything you want us to cover let us know we will do that for you uh, if there's any specials you'd like us to do and um, but if not we will see you next week see you in a bit